Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Woman's Cave. It is me by myself today, rocking it out, because I'm old, and I can say things like, rocking it out. Okay, done. And I also did dancing. That's not good. Me and dancing is not good. Anyway, moving on, moving on. So there's no Jade, just in case you didn't notice, this side of the screen is empty. Hello, invisible Jade, which means I get to say stuff like reality TV show. Yay. Okay, so let me get down to business. Uh, let's see, our business is books. We have books. And since Jade's not here, I'm gonna be silly and go, and flask. And I did not drink from this, otherwise I'd be more fun. Anyway, our first book is, And I Thought Divorce Was Bad with Other Life Lessons. Did I do the introduction correctly? I think I missed a few things. All right. And I thought being grown up was easy. If I missed things, put it in comments or whatever. And I thought I could juggle it all. We thought we could, and then we found out we couldn't. And I thought I did my journey alone. And I thought he was the one. Yes, we've all been there. And I thought I had it all figured out. And then we have the Misfit Guides. Misfit Guides, a, swass, a, a swassy say. A swassy say. No, it's a sassy sway. The Lee's Crooked Footprints. The Misfit Guides, the, the Misfit Guides, the Cocktail Soirees, and the LBD. And no, for Jade's dad, it does not mean Little Black Daughter. It's Little Black Dress. And then, of course, there's me with my lovely, well, Nona Marie writes the Widow's Debt series. This is two of the seven. <coughs> Oh, wait, wait, and we have one more book to go, because I picked this one up today. Ha <laughs> ha, upside down. And I thought the workbook, and you guys, it is here. Round of applause. Oh, soon, I'm sorry. See, I'm, Jade is not sitting here, but Jade is behind the scenes. She did my lighting and everything, and she's like, uh-huh, I'm signing to you soon, soon. Not yet, not yet. But I'm going to show it anyway, because I love it. It is... It's gonna be available to the public on March 16th, but this, you guys, is our pride and joy for 2019. This is the second year of the 25 hottest authors, artists, and advocates. Indie authors, artists, and advocates. Are you good with that, Jade? Okay. Also, you guys, Inspirational Women in Literature, Media, and Journalism Awards are coming up March 16th. Don't, don't miss that. Come see people get awards. They're cool people getting awards. And please, oh, please, oh, please, watch our reality TV docu-series show. Dang it, I thought she had left. So I have to say our docu-series show, season two on channel 18 if you're in Sacramento and on Amazon for anywhere else in the world. Yeah, just click that little thing, Just Right in Life. All right, you guys. You are not here to hear anything else about me because I have done some bragging. No, I didn't. I just told you facts, but that's okay. You are here to hear from our wonderful guest. Guest. Wow. Hold on. Let's try this again. Wonderful guest. There's nothing in here. She always takes it. Anyway, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Julie Bogart, and I'm the author of the book, The Brave Learner. Yes, she is. Wow, and that's short. Are you? Uh, <laughs> do you want me to go into detail? I'm ready to. I don't know yes, what you want. go for it. I didn't even have time to formulate my first. I was like, I have a question, but I was like, I've got time. Nope. Okay. Oh, no problem. So uh, I'm Julie Bogart. I started a company about 20 years ago called brave writer that teaches writing and language arts to homeschooling families. We have online classes and products, but we also have uh, families who are in traditional education, like public and private school. And those classes are designed to help kids find their writing voices and be successful in academics. Uh, I am a trained writer myself. I'm a published author, freelance writer, ghostwriter, magazine editor, and I built the company, all of the programs out of that experience. But I also homeschooled my five kids. Uh, they are now all adults between the ages of 22 and 31, and we homeschooled for about 17 years. Okay, first of all, you do not look old enough to have anybody the age of 31. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you should never claim it. You should be like, it's about like 12 and something, but I had super geniuses. They're out. They're like out of college now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I have to ask, so out of all the, that long list, thank you for providing that long list. You're welcome. Which one do you like more? Like freelance, journalism, right? I actually, 
Yeah, I actually love academic writing the most. It's my greatest pleasure, but I don't work in the academic community now. So uh, I, books would be second. I love writing. Uh, I loved the book that I just wrote, and I really love long form writing when I can get it. Um, so that is my favorite. Okay, you said the book you just wrote. Now, yes. is it out already? It is. Uh, it's Where called is The Brave. It? You can find it everywhere. It's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, IndieBound, uh, in any local bookstore, Barnes & Noble, again, uh, some of the indie stores as well. But yeah, it's everywhere. So The Brave Learner by Julie Bogart uh, is available. And you can go to thebravelearner.com if you want direct links. I created, I'll show you real quick, um, a digital downloadable companion guide so that you can study the book and have a place to put your thoughts and practices. So uh, that's for free. Just download it at thebravelearner.com. Okay, so now I was recently just talking to another author. She did a book signing. And yes. She said the thing that she hates the most is technical or academic writing. So I have to ask, how <laughs> did you fall in love with academic writing? Oh, I know. People say they don't like it, but for me, what I really love is the research. I like having to dig deep into a topic and discover the points of view from a variety of sources and then bring my own critical insight to bear on those references. So I love that. And I love how it's sort of ship shape. I like the fact that I have a um, popular writing voice. You know, I can write for regular copy for the consumption by the mass market. I like bringing that into the academic world and then actually doing the work and providing something that's both readable and insightful. So that's why I love it. And it's always been that way. I loved it in college. I loved it in grad school. Uh, and really, most popular books today are sort of academic writing light. People will bring research into their work and then try to write for a popular audience. So academic writing is just, for me, a notch more intentional than that, a little bit deeper, a little bit more, uh, I don't know, uh, resourced. But they both are complementary. I do like writing nonfiction. I'm not a fiction writer. I, uh, I did do NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month one year, and wrote, you know, the 50,000 word novel that will never, ever be read by anyone else because it's terrible, but I really enjoyed doing it. Oh, I think, I, I don't know, you say you like academic writing and I immediately go, so fiction, so historical fiction where it's just like, you know, Abe Lincoln did something cool, but you know, just a little bit off the, the beat. I love that. No, actually, when I first started writing as an adult, uh, historical fiction is what I wanted to do. I'm a history major from my undergrad degree and theology for master's, but that undergraduate degree and the love of reading made me want to do historical fiction. And literally, the, the you know, novel that I wrote is historical fiction, but I know from reading, writing, that my strength as a writer is not fiction. Uh, it is actually much more in the nonfiction sphere. I like creative memoir. That's also a genre I really enjoy. So yeah, I mean, I just like writing. I write every day. I've been writing my whole life. It's, it's my favorite thing. Okay, my narcissism is coming into play just a titch here. So you said <laughs> you like creative memoir. Yeah. And I had to, I was taking creative writing. I was going to get yes. a in it. And I, I came across creative memoir and I absolutely hated it. Oh, interesting. What did you hate about it? I think I hated the teacher more than anything. <laughs> oh, well, that'll do it. That'll do it. I felt bad, but I was like, okay, I think I got it. I think I have a handle on it. And then she's like, oh, she, she literally sent like six pages of what was wrong on my first two pages. And it was only a four page assignment. It was our first. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I was like, ooh. But anyway, yeah, I... I think what I don't like is like the, the that you're kind of stuck-ish, not really stuck. Well, because you know, in fiction, you get stuck, you imagine yourself a way out, or you can go back, or you can, you know, set something up before, and then you just imagine your way out. And nonfiction, you get stuck, you gotta, you gotta think or research or something. And well, and that's, and that is what I love about it. So I really like the research process. And for me, it is, it's a bit like solving a puzzle and trying to put together a whole bunch of disparate parts to make new sense. So I like the sort of intellectual challenge, I guess, of that kind of writing. But 
even creative memoir, the word creative is an important feature in that word pair. Memoir is to the best of your own memories. And then the creative piece is the meaning that you bring to those memories. And that will always introduce automatically an, ele an element of fiction. I remember um, Patricia Schneider saying in her wonderful book, Writing Alone and with Others, that all historical writing, uh, you know, personal memoir writing is fiction. Because if you were to ask somebody else about the very same circumstances, they're going to remember them sometimes dramatically differently, sometimes just a little differently. But most of us funnel our memories through the meaning we're trying to make for our lives. And that changes over time even. So how I understood a childhood memory or experience at age 18 changes at age 30, changes again in my 50s. And so part of what memoir is about isn't about getting the events chronologically correct or the details most accurate. It is about the meaning that you're generating at that stage of your life when you choose to finally put it down on paper. So I think that's what's really fun about creative memoir. It's really just gaining insight into your own journey as a human. Yeah, it is. It's very nice. I remember we had uh, Mimi Schwartz on the show. She wrote a book about creative nonfiction. Mm. Nice. And um, when she was talking about it, I went, oh, I like it. I like the idea of this. But we have been on creative nonfiction for a while. We need to get to what's behind you, which is the great <laughs> learner. Thank you. Have you have entire business. First of all, I how did we get started? And then second, what is your goal for the future? Yeah, so I started Brave Writer because of my passion for writing in the year 2000. Uh, I had been working professionally, but also homeschooling, and I discovered that the ways that parents taught writing to their kids was ineffective. A lot of parents found that their kids had writer's block. They didn't feel confident in their own writing abilities. And I knew in my background as a professional writer and as an editor that there were tactics, techniques that you could use that provide a coaching kind of platform for teaching writing as opposed to this educator graded experience. So what we do in Brave Writer is we're very process oriented uh, when we're developing that writing voice and we are helping children feel confident and comfortable to take writing risks. And then we show parents how to coach through the revision process so you don't end up with tears and a lot of hurt feelings. So that's my company, Brave Writer. What happened then is over the last 20 years, raising my five children, being able to interact with thousands of families, I discovered principles that actually help the whole education of the child. And so the Brave Learner, my book, is built from those understandings. It's my pedagogy for how to enchant and enrich your child's education. Great. Okay, so if you are a homeschooler out there, hey, Carrie, so if you're going to watch the show, she's talking now, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> Carrie homeschools, and she's an amazing author. Amazing author. Nice. Anyway, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, like, I apologize, Carrie, if you're watching this, because you probably didn't want the world to know that. Um, <laughs> the amazing author part, you didn't want them to know. But anyway, yeah, this is an amazing undertaking. How do you find the time for you and your work? So when I had kids at home, I think I, I think my personality can tolerate a certain level of chaos and still focus. I don't know why that just is kind of true about me. But I also carved out time for myself. I realized early on as a mother that it was really important for me to have a little bit of time every week devoted to something that I cared about that wasn't just related to the children. Obviously, I'm a full-on stay-at-home mother who loves her kids, or I would never have homeschooled them. But I knew that part of what was important for my children to see was an engaged, active adult life. And I also knew that just to feel like a full sense of my personhood, I wanted to embrace both the opportunities of adulthood and its unique features, you know, making a contribution, having a say, expressing myself as a grown person. So writing is the way that I do that. So I used to spend like, I don't know, two hours a week at the library working on writing. And over time it evolved, you know, and then I would get up early or I'd stay up late depending on whether my kids were little babies or teenagers and their sleep patterns. Uh, I had a supportive partner who would let me go to the library on a weekend or do grad school. So kind of like that. It was sort of woven throughout my life. Uh, in addition to homeschooling. And of course, they fed each other. You know, homeschooling, 
created my understanding of teaching and then working in the business helped me grow the pedagogy and they kind of went back and forth like that. Okay. Now we have to, I have to cover that one last thing before we, we close this down because it's a little bit over 15 minutes. This is what happens when I'm alone in the studio. <laughs> Besides me being able to say reality TV, I get to say stuff like that. I get to go over time. Um, we have to talk about your podcast. Oh, thank you. So how did this get started? I mean, you have the brave learning business, you have the writing, and then all of a sudden we have a podcast. Yeah, so the podcast is really just my attempt to reach out to our community or anyone who wants to listen, uh, where I share the principles of brave learning and brave writing. In the most recent season, what I did is we asked through survey for the most common questions homeschool parents face when they're trying to support education of their children. And we selected our top 13, and then each, uh, each one of those I interviewed and gave advice, sort of coaching advice for their troubles, their struggles. And then I sent them away for three months. And then they came back and told me how it worked out. And then we would discuss how they took those principles or activities and applied them to their family. So yes, if you go to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts and put in Julie Bogart and Brave Writer, or the name of the podcast is A Brave Writer's Life in Brief, uh, you will bring up our podcast, and I'd love you to listen along. We just hit a million downloads, so that was exciting. Exactly. This has been nice. This has been a lovely conversation. I feel very podcasty today. That is not a word. Don't look it up. Um, <laughs> unless you want to make it a word, and then just say it's Wilmona's word. I'd like to be famous for that. Just Wonderful. But thank you so much, Ms. Bogart, for stopping in today and joining me in the Woman's Cave. But let's hear where everyone can find more information about all that you do. So bravewriter.com is where you can find online writing classes if you're looking for that for your kids or products to help you coach your children in writing. Uh, thebravelearner.com is where you'll find our downloadable companion guide to go with my book. <laughs> and uh, it also has links to all the places that you could order the book. And then the podcast, of course, is available through any podcasting app. Okay. So you guys, this has been Ms. Julie Bogart, the brave learner slash writer. And I'm Wilnona Marie, and there is no JD today. Uh, before I leave, I have to remind you guys that if you go to andwethought.com, which I did not mention at the beginning, that our website is andwethought.com. You can pick out the books you saw at the beginning. And you can also, if you go to the ladies tab and go down to the middle of the page, you can see the charities that we proudly support. We please ask that you support them too, either by, you know, doing something good for them or, you know, cold hard cash works too. Yeah. That does work. <laughs> anyway, we want you to remember that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Winona and the Missing Jade. Bye-bye.